Good morning, and welcome to St. Patrick's St. Anthony Church. My name is Allison holst Gruby, and today is the second Sunday of Easter. Our liturgical celebration is assisted by our sacristans, Chris Kehoe and Joe Patoka, our live stream camera operator, Sister, Bar Sister Barbara Jean Kubik, our lectors, Enzo Guerrillo and Beverly Boyle, our Eucharistic ministers, Joan O'Hara, Paige Corral, Susan Ahern, Richard Kissel, and Lucianne Patoka, and our organist, Dr. Gabriel Lafal. Our presider and homilist for this Mass is Father Bill Bowden. We ask that you remember Michael and Celeste Echelente in your prayers this morning. Please rise and join now in singing our processional hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, on this octave of Easter, we celebrate God's unparalleled mercy. Out of love for all of us, Jesus died on the cross in atonement for sin. Out of mercy, for those whose faith is weak or doubt is strong, Jesus comes to reassure us of his eternal presence. Out of mercy for those who cannot see him, Jesus blesses them in their faith. This Easter season, let us rejoice, for the risen Lord is in our midst, forever bestowing God's mercy upon us. Lord Jesus, risen Son of God, you bring pardon and peace to all who put their trust in you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, beloved one, your mercy endures forever. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, Prince of Peace, you are the source of healing for all who have turned away from you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the abundance of your grace give increase to the people who believe in you, look with favor on those you have chosen and clothe them with blessed immortality. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions were his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
thrust down, thrust down and falling, but the Lord was my helper, the Lord is my strength and my song, he was my A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, 
when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Many Protestant ministers have the custom of posting the titles of their Sunday sermons on a message board outside their churches. Some of the more memorable ones I've seen include, Is God your steering wheel or your spare tire? The sin of adultery, you can't have your Kate and Edith too. The key to a successful marriage, victorious secrets. There was an epiphany sermon entitled Three Men and a Baby, a Palm Sunday sermon entitled The Lord Needs Your Ass, and a sermon called An Address to Submarine Christians, Those Who Only Surface on Christmas and Easter. Another sermon caught my attention, whose title included a typo, presumably, a sermon called Sexual Immortality. I bet the church that Sunday morning was standing room only. <laughs> well, if the sermon you're about to hear had a title, it would be Seeing or Believing. Which comes first, the chicken or the Easter egg. It's a title positively guaranteed to send the religious seeker to the Episcopal Church up the street. (laughs) 
On the one hand, an argument could be made that when it comes to Easter faith, seeing precedes and leads to believing. Notice how the language of sight is used repeatedly in St. John's accounts of the first Easter. Mary Magdalene looked into the empty tomb and saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been. She turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. After he calls her by name, she finally recognizes him, and then she runs off and reports to the other disciples, I have seen the Lord. That evening, in the gospel passage we heard a few minutes ago, Jesus appears to his disciples in the upper room where they are cowering in fear. The passage tells us the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Later they tell the absent St. Thomas, we have seen the Lord, but he counters with the claim, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, I will not believe. A week later, the risen Christ appears to them again, this time with Thomas present. Thomas sees and believes. We cannot discount the importance of seeing in the faith of the first disciples. They are, after all, the eyewitnesses on which our own Easter faith depends. If they saw nothing but a figment of their imaginations, if they only thought they saw Jesus after his crucifixion, because they really, really wanted to believe he had risen from the dead, even though he hadn't, if the resurrection were merely an inner conviction that Jesus was alive, even though his dead body was rotting in the tomb, then the temple of our faith would be built on sand. It would be no more substantial than wish fulfillment, the flimsiest of fantasies, the merest gossamer of a pipe dream. What Thomas and the others saw lays the firm foundation of our belief that Christ is risen. But there is another sense in which it works the other way around, a sense in which believing is a prelude to seeing. The last words of Jesus and what may well have been the original ending to John's Gospel take the form of a beatitude spoken to St. Thomas. Jesus says, Thomas, have you believed because you have seen me? And here's the beatitude. Blessed are they who have not seen and yet believe. Earlier in his gospel, John gives us an example of just such blessedness. When the beloved disciple believes that Jesus has been raised from the dead even before he sees the risen body. On one level, the beloved disciple sees what Mary Magdalene and Peter see, the empty tomb with its discarded burial clothes. And yet, they don't know what to make of it. But with the eyes of his faith, the beloved disciple sees beyond the evidence at hand to the truth that the one who had been crucified, the one he so dearly loved, had indeed been raised from the dead. And so the beloved disciple is enfolded in that graced mantle of Christ's beatitude. But then, so are we. For without seeing his glorious form or hearing his voice, 
we too believe that Christ is risen, that he is alive with the very life of God, that death has no more power over him, but that he, he has the power to give us life, abundant life, eternal life. And that belief gives us the same eyes of faith as the beloved disciple possessed, the same visual acuity to see Christ and the world around us created through his word, to see Christ in the church born from his wounded side, to see Christ in each and every person who has come here today empowered by his spirit, and to see Christ especially in the bread and wine, which, through the power of that same spirit, will become our communion in his living, life-giving body and blood. So which comes first, the chicken or the Easter egg, the seeing or the believing? Perhaps, as so many of my questions are, it's a meaningless question. Perhaps, like so many things Catholic, it isn't a case of either or, but a both and. Seeing the evidence of Christ's presence among us strengthens our faith. And believing in him sharpens our vision to see him ever more clearly. We need both the seeing and the believing if we are to be an Easter people, and not just once or twice over a 12-month period, like submarine Christians, but throughout the year, as true disciples who surface from their sleep and rise from their beds each morning, intent on bearing witness to his rising from the dead. In the words of the Apostles' Creed, we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God's mercy endures forever and so we can confidently bring our needs before the Lord. For the church, that we may be bearers of God's mercy to all who need it most, especially those who find themselves doubting God's presence in our lives or in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the end to armed conflict and to gun violence, especially in Ukraine, Gaza, and Haiti, so that all God's children may enjoy the peace that Jesus offers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who struggle to believe in a merciful God in the face of evil and sin in the world, that Jesus' promise of his presence in a broken world may strengthen their faith and give them hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for those who are anxious or those who have doubts about their faith, that they may come to know the healing love of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in this faith, family of faith, that we may emulate the early Christian community as described in today's first reading and sharing what we have so that no person goes needy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill, especially Neil Napolitan, that they may be strengthened and upheld by Jesus the healer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Gretchen Maddock and Karen Ann Bernstein, that God will bring them to the joy of the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, your son comes to us in time of need, granting us peace. Hear the needs of your people and grant them in your mercy through Christ our Lord. Your sacrifice and mine might be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness. Through Christ our Lord, The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, 
but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. We give you thanks, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed us in your own image and entrusted the whole world to our care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, we might have dominion over all creatures. And when, through disobedience, we had lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and time again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father Most Holy, that in the fullness of time, you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. And to the sorrowful of heart, joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an everlasting covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father Most Holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you, In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead, we proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathering into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially for your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Leonard, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, and your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow upon the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Filled with the spirit of the risen Christ, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We offer one another a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Tickets go on sale today for our community day at the Yard Goats, uh, and that uh, game is on Sunday, June 16th. So please stop by the Franciscan Center immediately after Mass to purchase your tickets. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Let us go in hope. Oh. It's the end of the Easter octave. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia.